Good morning everyone. Today we are going to do a revision on your ESH 609 Child Psychology Unit 4 Subunit 2 Readiness and Maturation as Related to Learning. Now uh, before coming to the topic let me just uh, remind you a little bit on learning. Okay. Every day as human beings we are learning something, right? Sometimes we learn uh, good things and sometimes we learn bad things. If you look at the definition of learning, it says that one of the definitions says that it is a relatively permanent change in the behavior of individuals, isn't it? So now, if we, if we consider the definition, we have to remember that, however, sometimes learning uh, does not take place permanently. There are temporary things that we do learn, which can be due to the effects of drugs or maybe due to accidents or maybe due to illness, okay, we, we end up learning some things, but they are not permanent and we forget about them. Similarly, there are also some things that we learn in our environment. Uh, we learn good things and we learn bad things. And sometimes both these things, they become permanent. So, however, for this learning to take place, whether it is good or bad, uh, there are two very important things. That is, the first thing is readiness and the second is maturation. Now, coming to our topic on readiness and maturation, first let me talk briefly on readiness. Now, what is this readiness? We have to understand that when we talk about readiness, uh, it does not mean uh, an ability or a mental capacity or an intellectual capacity, right? Readiness means uh, for a child, it is an entry point, okay, entry point which is relative to a particular concept or a skill at a given time, okay? For example, uh, if we are supposed to teach a child um, to walk, see, we have to remember that he has to be ready. Now, how will we know that a child is not ready? Because physically, if he's not fit, phys the physical thing comes now, okay? The importance of the physical ability comes here. We have to remember that we cannot just straight away say that you have to walk so you walk no we have to remember that first they have to be ready how can i start preparing myself to walk i have to remember that children before they start walking they will crawl okay they will crawl then they will start walking slowly slowly so it's a step by step process and after walking what will they do they will run I don't think anybody has seen a baby or a toddler running straight away before walking, okay? And if there are anyone out there, it's an exception. Exceptions are always there. So, and then uh, if we have to talk about, uh, I'll give you another example of readiness. Say you are going to teach somebody to read, say a child to read. Now, the important thing again here is readiness of the child. How will you know that the child is ready? Number one, only when that particular child has accumulated certain knowledge about the language in which you are going to teach him or her to read. Maybe it could be in Hindi or it could be in English, it could be in French. Now you want somebody to read in French if they do not have the knowledge set for that particular language, it will be impossible. So the first thing would be accumulation of the knowledge and the skill. Now the second thing would be alphabets. See, when we read, can anybody tell me whether they can just read without knowing the alphabets? It will be, you know, it will be a big joke, right? So in order to read again, we have to have uh, the knowledge set of the alphabets. We have to be equipped to read. And in order to read, we have to know the alphabets very well. Only then we can start reading. And again, reading also, it, it's a step-by-step -step process. You cannot just read straight away, right? First, you will start with words. You will start understanding the words. Then comes the sentences. Then comes the punctuations. All those things will come later on, right? So this is uh, these two are very important examples of readiness. What happens is when you have to get ready in order to learn something, both physically and mentally, individuals have to be ready. Children have to be ready. Even adults, we have to be ready. Here lies the importance of maturation. Okay, Apart from being ready, we have to remember that readiness also involves maturation. Because 
uh, without maturity when we talk about maturity again it will mean physical maturity and mental maturity without the person uh, becoming mature it is sometimes impossible to uh, learn uh, and when we talk about maturation we have to understand that uh, you know like maturation is also a permanent change you know you, you you from a baby you become a toddler from a toddler you become children from there you progress to adolescence then you come to adulthood and so on and so forth right and these permanent changes you cannot say from an old man i become a baby again so that is totally next to impossible so maturation is a permanent change and this permanent change it can be seen physically and sometimes even on the way people think okay uh, these are permanent changes uh, on our thoughts okay and on our behavior on our behavior and sometimes this is uh, this happens even without uh, regards to environmental influences and how do these changes take place because it changes this changes takes place to the biological process of aging we age okay nobody grows younger we are all growing older now and similarly even our learning also initially you will find that children can learn say two three words as they grow a bit older they may learn 100 words then after maybe uh, a certain next stage they will start learning 3000 words so that is one thing okay and another thing is um, 